everybody talked about uh, Georgia Tech's defense, and we felt like we had just as good or better defense, and we wanted to prove that today. Uh, and effort-wise, you know, the whole defense, we uh, flew around, made some bad plays, but we also made some good ones. So we're not exactly really proud, but we feel good about where we are right now. We feel like, you know, we could have won and uh, we had a lot of opportunities to win, but we made a lot of mistakes and uh, we're very fortunate to come out, you know, on, as a tie, I guess, but uh, it, it feels good to know that we could play that well against a good team who is rated 11th team in the nation. So, uh, you know, you just have to come out here next week and, you know, just try hard and, and just get ready for next weekend. North Carolina 4-2-1 and one overall, 1-1-1 one, one and one in the Atlantic Coast Conference after the tie with Georgia Tech. We're going to come back and meet a couple of outstanding North Carolina offensive linemen and also have a talk with a former Tar, a Tar Heel All-American. No football team is a whole lot better than its offensive line coach. These guys don't get a whole lot of publicity, but they deserve it. We're going to talk to a couple of them today. Well, they're both outstanding leaders. Kevin Donnelly, one of the dominant offensive linemen in the country right now. We're very proud of Kevin, also an academic All-American. And he's a great student. He's played guard. He's played center. And he's really been a stronghold at guard uh, since the first of the year. Very proud of both young men. Andy Dinkin and Kevin Donnelly, I'm Mike Small. Talk to them, and you'll see it today, brought to you by Eckerd. If the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, then you've got to figure the path to playing time as an offensive lineman would begin with a trip to the supermarket. Okay. Kevin Donnelly and Andy Dinkin are roommates and offensive linemen on Carolina's football team. So logically, you'd figure there'd be quite a bit of food passing through their apartment. But as Donnelly explains, you can't just buy anything. You know, a lot of people, when they're picking out their fruits and vegetables, poke, prod, thump, do whatever they can to see if it's ripe or not. I have a special technique. I smell it. It smells slightly sweet, but I know it's ready and ripe, ready to eat. Mmm, real good. But Dinkin has a different approach. Don't get me wrong, I'm very nutritious conscious, just like Kevin. But I also believe in making my meals quick and easy. Shopping needs to be quick and easy as well. I'm all set for the week. With the food situation settled, let's head back to the apartment and examine what life is like for these two as roommates. And rumor has it, Kevin Donnelly as well, a bit of a neat freak. Funny, golden, I'm the good one, man. I just cleaned the kitchen about an hour ago. Look what you've done now. Shut up, Mr. Clean. I'm just making some noodles. I know, but you spat now. Look at the mess you made. No one has to be that messy making something. I'm a little sloppy, but it's all going down the same tube. Anyway, I'll clean it up. Don't worry. Gosh. He's taught me a lot about organization and being neat. Not, not that I haven't always been a neat person, but Kevin is uh, excessively clean, and I think he really enjoys seeing the, uh, the carpet marks when he vacuums. I think that's a big, big turn on for him. Donnelly says that while he spends his time cleaning up, Dinkin likes to spend his yeah, time reaching out and touching someone. All right, Mom. I, every time the phone rings, you can about 90% chance it's for Andy Dinkin. He's got more people calling him. He's calling people. You know, if anything happens major in his life, he comes back and sends out about 10 calls. Mother, father, brothers, you know, everybody. He's got to know this. He's got friends all over the place, all over campus. And it's just, uh, when we come home to the apartment after practice or a long day, you can bet that answer machine's bleeping with a message on it. And there, it's going to be for Andy Dinkin. But when it comes down to football, Dinkin and Donnelly are very serious. Donnelly's an All-American candidate at left tackle while Dinkin has exceeded expectations at right guard. It's hard for fans to know how an offensive lineman is playing during a game until he messes up. But here in the film room, the coaches get an accurate reading of their talent. In my 20 years of coaching, Kevin Donnelly would really rank as the number one tackle that I've coached. I mean, the things that Kevin do that make him stand head and shoulders above the other people, the fact that, first of all, he has great balance, he has the uh, real outstanding size, and also he's a student of the game. He very rarely, if ever, makes a mistake. Andy is, is as hard a working football player as we have, and it's very important to him. And uh, he works hard every day he goes out there. The rest of them see this. And they work hard at it, too, because of uh, Andy's work habits and Andy's leadership. Enjoyed hearing from Kevin Donnelly and Andy Duncan. And now we look back our flash from the past. This former North Carolina All-American Art Weiner, who teamed up with Charlie Justice in the late 40s to give Carolina some great football teams, brought to you today by Red Roof End. 
Art Weiner was an All-American receiver on those North Carolina football teams of the late 1940s that featured Charlie Justice, and that Weiner-Justice friendship has not only endured, but has grown over the years. He, matter of fact, we're probably better friends now than we were in school. And uh, I've been in business with Charlie, and, and that worked out real well, and our wives are real good friends, and I think he's just a great guy. Weiner and his son own a travel agency in Greensboro, and Art and his wife spend a lot of their time now traveling. So we'll take a trip about once, twice every month, and uh, I think I mentioned to you we're going to Japan in October, and we're going to stay a month over there. And we've, we've been on 15 cruises now. We love the cruise, and that's, that's a great way to travel, and it's a good value for the, for the money, and, and we've been all over the world on different cruise ships. That's a lot of fun. I'd highly recommend it to you. We're going to come back on the Mac Brown Show and talk about next week's game against Maryland. And Coach Brown might have a couple of other observations about the tie with Georgia Tech. After this, from First Union. North Carolina is a much improved football team. Has Maryland coming to Keenan Stadium next Saturday. And if you want to keep up with Tar Heel football, right here is the answer. Carolina Blue comes out 40 times a year. Credit card orders can order today by calling 1-800-637-BLUE. Coach Brown did not want this show to go by without having, uh, without having an opportunity to say something about your kicking game, Coach. Well, John, when you go back and look at it, we said turnover ratio, kicking game, and field position would make the difference. If the defense doesn't give them an easy one, make them go the distance. Clint Walton, he's two for two in the field goal range. Our kickoff coverage was dominant. But what about Scott McAllister? Mm. There's a turnover in the kicking game as Reggie Clark covers their punt. There's another close call. And then, John, the, the key play of the game after Reggie gets his turnover, the other key play is kicking the ball dead at the six-inch line. Right. Our kicking teams are playing as well as anybody in the country. When you make college football teams go the distance, we gained four turnovers. We didn't turn it over offensively, scored in the four-down zone. That's what college football is all about. Not as pretty as we wanted offensively. we still got some work to do there. We understood that coming into the year, John. But our football team did what they had to do Saturday to put themselves in a position to win the ball game in the fourth quarter. Maryland comes to, uh, to Keenan Stadium next Saturday, Coach. Your team was disappointed. A lot of people were surprised, but the North Carolina team was disappointed with the tie. What kind of week of practice do you think you'll have this week? Well, we're going to have to pick them back up. I feel like that after they get away from the tie and understand the progress that they've made, John, they've still got an opportunity to go to a bowl. Uh, they've got some tough games ahead in the next four weeks and some fun games, all conference games. And as soon as they start watching that Maryland film uh, with their win over Duke last week, that'll get them out of it better. This team is a special group of young people for you North Carolina fans. They've wanted to win every ball game as much as anybody I've been around. Uh, they fight hard on Saturday. They're discouraged if they lose and, and probably like me too high if they win after the game, John. Uh, they weren't sure how to handle this one Saturday because they wanted to win so badly mm -hmm. to put themselves up in the top 25, uh, but they'll bounce back next week and play hard. Well, Coach, good luck against Maryland because Maryland's playing good football too. Sure are, John. Thank you very much. We thank you for watching. We'll see you right here next Sunday for Carolina, Maryland. The Mac Brown Show has been brought to you by...